This is Base the Kid, the hardcore casual, in association with the Undefeated Podcast, proudly sponsored by Disturbing Sports London, and I'm here with reigning and victorious, now 7-0, five knockouts, Ezra, the Cannon, Taylor. Now listen, I know you said the fight weren't going to go the distance, but you kind of took the piss a little bit there, like <laughs> one second to go. Talk, talk me through it, how did you find it? I, I can't lie to you, man, like the, the time didn't even... It wasn't even a thing in my head. I'd seen the opportunity. I, was, I wanted to break him down. That was, a, that was what I wanted. That was a game plan. That's what we executed. I, I needed to be disciplined throughout, from round one to round eight. You know, it's, 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 it's the later rounds where you have to start holding it together. And I feel like I had it. I had it together. And I seen the opportunity. He was, you know, withering. And I, I went in there and got the job done, man. I'm happy. I, I, did a, I managed to perform, to give people an entertaining fight, do the eight rounds. It's another eight rounds in the bank. But I stopped my man as well. Um, but shout out to Joel McIntyre, man. You're tough as hell. <laughs> I saw that you was working behind that jab. Was that something that you'd been uh, purposefully working on in the gym? Or was that just naturally just the motion and the rhythm of how the fight was going? Both, man. Both. Um, as a student, as a game, you need to have a game plan and execute and stay on it. Um, I've got a good jab, but I have to vary it, man. I have to mix it up. I have to um, create opportunities. And that's, what, that's, what, that's, what, uh, that's the tool that I'm going to use most of the time to break my opponents down, you know? Um, and I just wanted to stay on that. I didn't want to get too hungry, start head hunting. The opportunities were there for big shots. I feel like I probably could have started winging them in from early, but you got to stay on it, man. If I'm trying to be number one and go all the way, I'm I, like, again, no disrespect to Joel McIntyre, but I'm thinking I'm training hard for people like Bivol, Burtaby. You know, I, I've got to stay on my game and just do what my team's telling me to do and believe in myself. And I feel like I've done that today, put my shots together and got in my way. Look, I'm spitting bars. <laughs> What did Joe McIntyre do well in there that either made you wary or just made you think, okay, I just got to keep breaking him down, steady, steady, steady. Like, what did he do that impressed you, if anything? His experience, man. You know when you come against someone who's so experienced, you know, to compose himself, conduct himself under pressure. Sometimes he will look like he's hurt, draw you in. These are the things that I'd, I've never really had in front of me before. So I've had to, I've had to kind of analyze and assess and then go again. You know, I don't want to go out there head hunting because he's. He's a, he's a tough, like I said, he's a tough fella. He, he caught me with a few shots, a few counters, whilst I was switching off. So he was, he was enabling me to switch on all the time. And that's what you need to do in a fight. You've got to switch on, man, because you can get your lights switched off so quick. So, yeah, he, he enabled me to bring out a different Ezra to, uh, for my seventh fight. And, and I'm so grateful for it, too. Was there any shots he sort of caught you with that either not necessarily troubled you, but made you think? Or was you like, no, this is, this is steady power, this is calm, just keep working? Every shot, any shot he landed on me, it made me think. It didn't, it didn't mean it doesn't matter that if it hurts or not or it fazes me. Any shot is too much. It's, the motto is hit and don't get hit. So why am I getting hit? It doesn't make any sense. I'm meant to be um, uh, perfecting my craft. So I need to hit and don't get hit. My, my coach didn't say go out there and get hit. So why am I getting hit? You know what I'm saying? So any shot he hit me with made me reassess and reevaluate and go again. If he hit me with a jab, slip, move off the line. So many things that I was going through my head, man. Um, and yeah. Clearly, I was thinking because I got the job done in a, in, a, in a great way. So, I know on Wednesday we was talking and you said that, God willing, you'd like to be out again in December, if possible. What kind of opponent are you sort of looking at if, uh, you know, the, you and the team? Who have you kind of got in your crosshairs? <sighs> top 10, man. Top 15, top 10. That was, a, excuse me, that was, a, again, a good fight, a very good step up for me. And I feel like I delivered in a, in a right way. Um, I think it's probably a bit too soon to be calling out certain names, but I want title first, man. Ricky Summers has got the English title right now. He's meant to be fighting Yard. Um, I was hoping to see him fight and, you know, see what we could do with that. But um, I'm not scared to say no one's name, man. I'm here. I don't fear none of these guys. Um, I'm working hard and I feel like in due time I'll be ready, man. And God willing, that could be December, man. You know, you never know what happens. In this, uh, this game, is crazy, man. you got YouTubers fighting boxers and making millions. So why can't Ezra fight for a title at the end of the year? Speaking of Ricky Summers, I actually heard a rumour that he's potentially facing um, Whitaker, Ben Whitaker next. That's, that's something I heard for the English title. No so, way. yeah, that's, that's something I've heard. So, let's say that that fight now takes place. Are you then willing to have more of a tune up fight, so to speak, and then take the winner of that fight moving forward? Well, I, again, me, I, I'm a fighter, and I'll take the winner of that. Ben Whitaker, listen. <laughs> Uh, let me say, not, let me not say it too much, man. But yeah, for sure, none of them two worry me. Um, no one does. No one does for real. Um, I feel like I got a good, good lesson um, in that in that ring today and tonight. 
And um, yeah, I wish them both luck if they are fighting because they're going to need it. Because after whoever is the winner of that is, you know, you're going to have to see me. And in December, 10 rounder possibly or still another eight? I was going to see what uh, my, team, my team decides. I feel like, why not? Again, uh, it depends on the opponent. Depends on, depends on so many other factors, external factors. Um, and, you know, regardless of what it is, eight round, 10 round against someone who's top 10, top 15, no matter what it is, I'm going to be ready for it regardless. Yeah, look, Ezra, thanks very much, man. We're going to take a more of your time. That's up. We'll speak soon. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate it.